Hey guys, what's up? It's Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science, and today, you guessed it, we are talking about proper skimmer lid maintenance and repair. Now, of course, the number one job of a skimmer lid is to make sure that when you're having family deck races around the pool, no one breaks an ankle. But, of course, there is proper care of these things, and we can all remember back in the 80s, we had our great paper skimmer lids protectors from Jones Brothers Manufacturing out of California. Sadly, they went out of business after the family murder suicide. And, uh, hey Tommy, did you, um, Skimmer sucking air. Did you fill this thing up? Is this water level good? Water level should be good. Well, you want to check the air. skimmer? Let's go take a look. Oh man, it bubbles. Door's not stuck. Dude, this thing's low. We got a leak. Yeah. What do you want? Before we call a leak detection pro, let's do some hunting around and see if we can find it ourselves. Before we call in a leak detection company and spend hundreds of dollars, we're going to do a little simple detective work on our own, starting with a bucket test. It doesn't get any easier than this. It's just a matter of finding a small bucket, something to put a weight inside of it, putting it on the top step. Mark it at water level. And put another mark on the inside. The same exact spot that that mark is. At this point, we'll take another smaller vessel and slowly begin to fill the inside of the bucket with water up to our inside line. If there's no leak on the pool, the water in the bucket should evaporate at the exact same rate at the, as the pool, and the difference should be exactly the same. There should be actually no difference in that case. If after a couple days we have less water in the pool than we do in the bucket, well, then the pool's almost completely empty. Really what I want to say is, if we end up with a lower level in the pool than we have in the bucket, we know we've got a leak somewhere. At this point, we want to make sure that all water sources are shut off to the pool. We want to run the equipment one last time and check for any damp spots around the pipes where they go into the ground at the equipment. Also, we want to check the pressure side manifold and look for leaks around the valves or any plumbing fittings. You want to also check your filter around the band clamp and also the top mount air relief as well as the bulkheads top and bottom and the plug at the very bottom. Don't forget to check the pump. You've got two plugs on the bottom. You've got your seal plate and the outlet nipple. That's the pipe that comes from the top and then also the main seal. After that you want to shut the system down for the duration of the bucket test. So it's been about three days. We've had our bucket in here We've had our water level shut off. And the great thing about this is, is this is going to tell the story right here, right now, whether we have a leak or not. So let's take a look and see what we have. Notice here on the outside of the bucket, I've got a significant loss of water. However, when I look at the inside of the bucket, I see that the levels only drop down maybe a half an inch. This tells me now that we definitely have a water loss somewhere on this pool above and beyond backwashing and drag out of swimming. What I love about the bucket test is the simplicity. It either means you have a leak or you do not have a leak. Doesn't matter if it rains, guess what? The same rate of water is gonna fall into the bucket as it's gonna fall into the swimming pool. You'll still be able to tell if there's a leak or not if that level is different. Now, if you come back in three days and the water level's higher in the pool than it is in the bucket, then someone's messing around with you and they're putting water in that pool and you're goofing up your test. This test also works whether the pool is running during this time or it's shut off. Now, there are some cases where we want to try both ways, with the pool shut off for a couple days and the pool running its normal schedule. What this will tell us is, is if we see a difference as in the pool loses more water while it's running, that might indicate that we have a plumbing leak versus 
if the pool loses the same rate of water, whether it's running or not running, that may mean we have some missing grout on the tile, we have a leak somewhere in the light niche, or some sort of compromise in the shell. After confirming a leak with the bucket test, you can pinpoint it using a dye test. You might be tempted to reach for the phenol red in your test kit. Don't do it. It's a carcinogen. Use a non-toxic dye test kit instead. So an important part of doing a leak test like this when we're dye testing down in the water is to do everything we can to make sure the water's calm. We want this pool to have been shut off for at least 15 to 20 minutes before we even attempt this so that the water is as still as possible. As you can see, I'm very slow with my dye. Very careful. And as you notice, we're not really getting any dye creeping in inside the return. No dye is being drawn in, which tells us that this return is not leaking. So we've seen what it looks like when we don't have a leak on a return. It's not very exciting. The dye just kind of dissipates and spreads out and disappears. Let's take a look and see what it looks like when we do have a leak on a return. As you can see, that dye is cruising right on in there. And I don't even have to get close to it for that to pull it in. That's a pretty strong current. This is a pretty significant leak. This is what I would probably call a uh, 30 to 40 gallon leak per day right here. Now sometimes those leaks can go a little slower and you may have to hold that dye a little closer to really find out. But that is typically what we'll see on a leak. If you hold the dye too far away, it may not drift in. Be sure to check all the returns all the way around the pool. The leak is going to draw the most water from the return that is in closest proximity if, in fact, the leak is on the return of it. Don't forget to check your pool toys and your chlorine floaters as they can be a significant source of water loss as well. Along with all return fittings, you need to check any additional lines that run to your pool, such as vacuum lines or even your water leveler line. The light niche is a necessary one to check as well. A few things to look at when it comes to checking leaks on the skimmer. First thing we're going to do is open this guy up, take a look down at the holes in the bottom to see what we have. While you're there, check the mouth of the skimmer for any missing pieces of grout, as those can be big leak points. In a traditionally plumbed skimmer, the back hole goes to the pool equipment, the front hole leads to the main drain. So one way to check that main drain is to squirt ever so carefully like we've been doing a little bit of dye there to see where that goes. To properly test the main drain though, we've got to remove the cover, which means we have to get in the pool. To do this, you'll need to remove the main drain cover. What we're looking for is where the pipe comes in for the main drain and along the mud ring to see if there's any missing plaster or grout. And if you do have any missing grout or plaster, you can almost bet that that's where there's going to be a leak. You're going to want to direct your test there. And while you're at it, do yourself a favor and scrub that algae out from under the main drain, unlike me. These are the tips and tricks that you can use to possibly solve the leak issue yourself or at least pinpoint before calling out a leak detection professional. Remember, if you do have an underground leak or a leak under your deck, a leak detection company is going to be able to pinpoint that leak to a very small area and that is going to reduce the amount of work and therefore reduce the amount of money you spend fixing that leak. I'm Josh Mall, the voice for Swimming Pool Science. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys.